Okay, our next question uh, actually is a really fun one, but it requires a lot of the vector identities uh, due to cross products. So if you're unaware of them, please go look in the book and uh, go ahead and review everything that you need. I tried my best to color coordinate it. It's actually really clever and uh, I'm excited to dive in. So let's go for it. The statement is a sphere of radius R carries a uniform polarization big P and a uniform magnetization M, not necessarily in the same direction. Okay, there's something that's going to be fun to deal with here soon. We want to find the electromagnetic momentum of this configuration. So now we get to deal with P and M. Earlier we dealt with just M, now we get to deal with polarization too. Let's dive in. All right, so our solution is, well, we first need to determine the fields of the sphere. Okay, so if we're just inside, we know that the field of a polarized object is negative 1 over 3 epsilon naught P, and then for outside, we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, 1 over R cubed, very reminiscent of the point charge configuration. But here, in the coordinate free form, we have 3 times P dot R hat, R hat minus P, and again, those are little p, so we have to you know, uh, the density was given as P is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed times big P. Okay, so all the polarization. And uh, and so, again, we saw that with the magnetization um, and the magnetic moment. Uh, similarly, for the B field, we have 2 thirds mu naught m, and then 4, or excuse me, mu naught over 4 pi times 1 over 3. Again, in the coordinate free form, very parallel to the polarization above. Um, for outside, and m is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed, big M. You got to go back to how they were defined with the densities, of course. Um, so, uh, yeah, nonetheless, let's uh, dive on in. Since we know that uh, the linear momentum P is equal to the integral of the density over the volume, and that the density is equal to E cross B, there are two contributions, one from inside and one from outside. Okay, so if we're going to deal with the inside first, um, we can do that pretty quickly. So for a little r less than big R, the radius of the sphere, uh, we have Pn. Uh, okay, just go ahead and plug in the cross product. You see the epsilons cancel, no big deal. Two third and one third give us negative two, two over ninths, mu naught. Then we have P cross M d tau. Um, we can rewrite this as the... Uh, changing the order of the cross product but we have to put in a negative sign anti-commutative of course and the tau is a sphere so you get four thirds pi r cubed um so simplify that through you get eight over uh 27 mu naught pi r cubed and cross p again we were never stated that they were in the same direction opposite direction or any type of thing like that so we just have to leave the cross product alone for now and we'll simplify later uh, with it in this form. Now, outside, we have quite the horrendous mess to deal with. Okay, so clearly we have a lot of constants here from the cross product, and what we need to do is note that the coordinate free form of the p dot r hat, r hat minus p, all that stuff, you need to distribute those things with each respective cross product. So I color coordinated it where we have uh, and blue to 3 p dot r again p dot r gives us a scalar so all that is in the r hat direction and p is a vector similar with the purple and the green all right so uh what we need to do is be very careful with this and we're just going to deal with this cross product alone okay so this cross product needs to be distributed so we have the blue cross the purple and we see what that's equal to so the not with three times three scalar of course p dot r is a scalar m dot r is a scalar and we have r cross r which we know goes to zero you can't have a cross product of a vector in itself um but we also have to distribute the three p dot r hat to the green term which is m okay so we do that in the next step and we see here that again we have a scalar there so we're left with r cross m we'll leave that alone now we're moving on to the little p term and that has to be distributed to the purple term. Again, we see what we do there. And for here, uh, you notice that although we pull out the negative 3 m dot r, since that's a scalar, and we're left with p times r, or cross r, I went ahead and reversed the order for another trick to come, and this negative signs cancel. 
And then clearly we're left with P, negative P cross negative M. Negative signs cancel and you're left with P cross M. No big deal there. Let's go ahead and plug it all back into the integral once we simplify it down. Okay. So now that we're here and now that we know that, that first distribution of the cross product went to zero because of R cross R, now we can uh, start to simplify what this mess in the integral is. All right. To simplify, let's consider this fact here. Um, we're going to leave the integral alone and we're just going to try to form match using the vector identities. So we have R cross P cross M. And we said that's equal to P, um, again, with the vector identity, R dot M minus M R dot P. And then if we take the cross product of this, okay, hopefully you see where we're going now. The right-hand side, we have to distribute that R cross to the P and the M, and that's what we do. And now you see that we have R cross P times R dot M minus R cross M R dot P. Um, again, since we uh, see that that, dot product is a scalar and dot products are commutative we can switch the order so we have m dot r times r dot p and then minus p dot r uh, times r cross m we can now use the back cab on the uh, left hand side of that uh, double or triple cross product now r cross the bracket and find another um, representation of this not using this vector identity specifically um, and then we can equate the two and substitute it into the integral. So on the left-hand side of that, we have R cross, R cross, P cross, M. Okay, that triple product is gross. And we use the back cab rule. And again, we see that we uh, once we expand that, we get R hat and then bracket R hat times P cross M minus P cross M, R hat dot R hat, which goes to one. No big deal. And so from these, we can equate the two products. Again, the triple product on the left and if we do that, we get the result from the first triple product and the result from the back cab method. And now we see that um, once we do this, the left-hand side can be substituted into the integrand, and uh, we can simplify this. Okay, so it's exactly what we need. We found two expressions from the vector identities, and now we can substitute it in. So P out is equal to mu naught over 16 pi squared, integral 1 over R, six, R to the sixth. Um, okay. So if we substitute the left-hand side in, you see that we're left with R. Uh, excuse me, you see that if we substitute the right-hand side in um, from the left-hand side, this simplifies down. We have to uh, distribute the three, no big deal. We do that. Um, yeah, and then you see here that the uh, P cross M simplifies down with the three times P cross M to negative two in the next line. Um, and then we go ahead and plug in d tau in that third line. So the r squared cancels down with the r to the sixth, leaving us with the r to the fourth. Um, and we're kind of left with this compact form here. But to evaluate the integral, we need to set the z-axis along p cross m. If that's the case, then r dot p cross m is equal to the magnitude p cross m cosine. Okay, because of the dot product, the magnitude goes out. Um, meanwhile, r hat is equal to the vector, the, unit vector is equal to several Cartesian vector coordinates, but sine phi and cosine phi integrate to zero, so the x and y terms drop out. Okay, again, that goes back to the result or the trick we used before. Um, just thanks to how phi works from zero to two pi, they cancel. Um, okay, so if we do that, we plug that in, and we uh, now see that we're only dealing with z hat, theoretically here. And now we go ahead and, uh, yeah, so we did plug this add in. Now we just go ahead and dive on in. Okay, so you see the cosine squared in the second step. We set up a bound 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi, 0 to pi, r to infinity since we're outside the sphere. And then, um, yeah, let's go ahead and see what we can do. We notice here how we can separate the r integral out. Um, that should be quick and easy to deal with. And now we have to distribute the angular integrals for the first product and the second product okay we go ahead and do that we get a sine theta d theta then the cosine squared theta sine theta d theta d fees are good to go um as you see the r integral uh reduces down to one over three times r cubed in the denominator and in the uh first uh product we see that we have three times p cross m the d phi integral gives us two pi the cosine squared sine theta integral gives us two-thirds 
So the threes cancel and like that. Similarly, the uh, fee integral gives us two pi again and the sine integral gives us two. It's for the second product and now we can just simplify it all down. Okay, what does this mean for us? Um, you see we get four pi from the first product, eight pi from the second product, that condenses to negative four pi, which cancels out with the factor from the 16 pi squared. Um, and now what we have to do is plug in what little p and uh, little m mean as far as keeping their areas together. And you see that we have um, a four third or four pi cancel from the p, the r cubed cancel from the p as well. So here we're left with after we take out all those constants, negative four mu naught pi r cubed over 27 with big P cross M. Okay. Why do we do it this way? Well, now we can combine it with the P in and the P out to find what the total P is. And that we had 8 over 27 mu naught pi r cubed M cross P minus 4 over 27 mu naught pi r cubed. And here we switched the order of the uh, cross products. So we had to include a negative, hence the cancels there. That way we can combine like terms. And then you see we just get 8 over 4 over 27, 8 plus 4 over 27, every other constant's the same. That reduces to 12 over 27, which again reduces one last time by canceling out a factor of 3 in both to 4 over 9 mu naught pi r cubed m cross p. Wow, that was a mess, but I guarantee you we'll see something similar again. So be on the lookout.